All right, we just got back from elk camp and we cut and wrapped all of our meat yesterday. But in the process, we kept this whole bowl here. It's like 53 pounds of meat that we're going to can. All right, so you might be wondering why in the world am I going to can all of this fresh elk meat? Some of the reasons that we like to do it is one, convenience. You come in here at night, you didn't lay any meat out, you've been gone all day, you've been hunting all day, and you come home and you want a hot meal, all you have to do is just go grab a jar, whip up some vegetables, and then within 15, 20 minutes, you have a complete meal. Another reason is it's fabulous. It's not like canned meat that you get from a store. This is like home cooked roast or stew meat that you've cooked and then you are preserving. It's really great. You might not be very familiar with canning meat, but today I'm gonna show you how. We're also gonna cover a few things like the different types of pressure canners, how to safely use them so you do not blow yourself up like I almost did the very first time I used mine. So I have two different pressure canners I'm gonna be using today. I have an older one and then I have um, one of the newer ones. The older one is, I think, is much easier to use. All you have is just this little jiggle that goes on top. It's got removable rings. And so that's how you can co control your pressure. So you, mean you can go five pounds, 10 pounds, or your 15 pounds of pressure. And then when you have this on there, you control everything by the, um, the height, your temperature. You just want this to jiggle just a little bit. I like this one because when I'm in the house, I can hear it outside. I don't have to constantly be watching it. I can know if it's getting, um, if the fire's getting too high by how it's jiggling or if it starts to jiggle not enough, then I know I need to go out there and turn the heat up. The second one that we're, um, I'm gonna be using today is one of the newer ones. It's got a gauge on top of it um, and that gauge has your pounds of pressure. And so you have just a little stopper that goes on here and then you still control everything with the heat, but you it doesn't make any noise. It's very, very quiet, which is great if you're wanting, you know, if you're doing it in the house and you're worried about the, um, the noise of it, but you constantly have to be looking at this gauge. You have to make sure that you're in the right zone. If it goes too low, then you have to start over again with your, with your time. So I prefer the old one because I can hear it, um, and if I can, ever find one that has the jiggle, I will probably replace this one with this one because I really dislike using this one. Another thing about pressure canners, we all do it when we get a new appliance, we just get it and use it and hope for the best. A pressure canner is not like that. When you get a pressure canner, please read your book. They're great, great devices. I use mine every year. But when I got my first one, this old one here, I did not read the book. I got it, found out how much pressure I was supposed to use and put it on there and I just about blew it up. So read your book when you get the pressure canner. It's very, very important. Very easy, just follow the steps, but you need to know your pressure canner, the amount of water that's in there, what this is supposed to sound like, your time, your pressure. You need to know all of that when you use a pressure canner. All right, so I'm gonna put this aside and we are gonna start canning our meat. All right, so the first thing we need to know is what exactly do you need to can meat? And it's pretty, pretty simple, you don't need much. We've already talked about the pressure canner. That is a must when you are canning meat. You cannot do this any other way. You need your meat, you need salt. Um, I am using pink Himalayan salt. You can also use um, canning salt. Uh, you need your funnel, which helps to get the meat in quickly, your measuring spoon for your salt, and then you just need your jars. When you are canning meat, you do not have to sterilize your jar because it is gonna be at a high pressure for an hour and a half. So just wash your jars, clean jars, and then your lids and your rings. Speaking of canning lids, I typically reuse my lids every year. We've been using the same lids for eight, nine years now. And this past year, I noticed that I had a couple of jars that have um, popped and the food went bad. And when I opened them, I could see that the edges of the lids were bent from when we popped the jars open. So this year I had to buy all new lids and it was a really bad year to buy lids because with COVID going on, more people are canning. And so they were very difficult to find. 
uh, and they were very expensive to find. So when I first started looking for lids this year, I found this great deal on Amazon and I bought them. They were just a generic lid. And then when I can some squash from the garden out of nine jars, five did not seal. So I had to go back and buy the expensive ones and they were really expensive. The price of them has tripled. And so we spent a lot of money, but we did get um, name brand lids. So don't skimp on your lids. Um, two great brand ball and Kerr lids are the best to go with. That's usually the only ones I buy, but do not get the cheap off brand lids because they do not work. Most of the jars you buy now are all self sealing jars, which means all you have to do is put your lid on there, put that on there and throw it in your canner and it will seal. Some of the older jars and you can find these still, people are selling them through eBay or Craigslist or if you're close to a flea market, they sell jars and if they, they're not self sealing. If they're not self sealing, they're older jars and you actually have to have, I've never used these, but you have to have a wax that goes around the top of the jar and then you have your lids and your rings and the jars that don't say self sealing if you don't have the wax they're not going to seal and if your food does not seal well it will go bad all right so now that we've covered all that let's get started canning meat you do not have to put salt in your jars it is optional i like to put salt in mine but you don't have to or if you don't want to use the same amount you can use less um, for the big jars i just put a teaspoon of salt and it's usually whatever salt I have at the house. Um, sometimes I have canning salt. Um, this year I haven't had any, so I've just been using this pink Himalayan salt and it works just as good. So you put your salt in there. I'm gonna try using this funnel. It's a small one. I can't find my big one, so I might end up um, throwing this to the side and just cramming it in the jars. All right. So you wanna pack this meat in your jar pretty tightly since you're not using liquid you don't want a lot of air bubbles in there and you want to leave about an inch of space at the top so once you get this in here i'll do a couple jars and then i'll go and get the air bubbles out the method that i use for this which is the easiest method is called raw pack you can cook your meat and put hot liquid on it and then you don't have to cook it as long. But this just seems the easiest for me and we can a lot and so I like easy. All right. So I just use a spoon or sometimes a knife and then you just wanna go, you can take that off and you just wanna go around the edges here and just kinda pack it in there. You just don't want any, there's a, there's a big bubble there. You don't really want any of the big bubbles it won't hurt if you do you just once it cooks it cooks down and so you just have less meat in here so you pack them in once you get it packed down throw some more in there All right, so once you got that done, it's kind of strange not putting any liquid in it, but it, it really does work. All right, one thing you do want to do is just have like a wet rag and you want to go and wipe the rim of your jar off because you want a good contact to make that lid stick down really well. All right, so you just put those on there and put your lids on. You don't want these super tight. You don't want them loose, but not super tight. So it's, they call it fingertip tight. So just a quick little spin. And then those are ready for the canner. 
You'll also notice that with this meat, there's a lot of gristle, a lot of fat in here, but that's kind of what you want because when you cook this down, it kind of cooks down into make to make a gravy. If you didn't have all this, if you didn't have all that in there, your meat's going to be kind of dry. So the meat that you would not normally use is perfect for this because it cooks down really well. And another thing with canning meat, try to use wide mouth jars. The little ones, I'm out of a wild, I'm out of most of my wide mouth jars, and so I'm having to use some little ones, and it's not very convenient to try to get the meat into the little mouths. Another thing about these wide mouth jars is I don't have to use a spoon to smush it down because my hand fits in the jar, so I can just smash it in there. And you can also, if you want, you can put spices in this, this meat as well. When you dump your salt in, just put you some spices in the bottom. You could use fresh herbs from the garden if you have those. I, I don't put spices in ours when I do it because I don't know what I'm going to be using the meat for. But you could if you want put spices. All right, so we are just about ready to go put these in the canner. And I should mention, we do these big jars because we have two growing boys. And so when we do little jars, we don't have enough. I mean, they eat a lot. It's actually amazing how much food a kid can eat. So we used to do small jars and then we got where we were just using two jars at a time. And so now I don't do anything meat wise um, that we're gonna eat as a meal in these big jars. I will do some small jars if we have any left for, you know, just mixing, mixing it with stuff and putting it on crackers or, you know, just sandwich in the middle of the day if the kid wants that or something. And two, if you forget to put your salt on the bottom, just throw it in on the top. It's not gonna hurt anything. I have my canners set outside today because it is September 10th, but it's still kind of warm here and I don't want to heat my house up because we don't have air conditioner. So everything is getting done outside today. Another thing, when you, before you start using these jars, kind of inspect them to make sure you don't have any nicks or cracks because if they do, they'll bust in the canner. I have had it happen multiple times. And so always just give them a once over and make sure that they have nothing going on with them. All right, so we're gonna go and put these in the canner. I'm going to load my old canner first. All right, so I do all my outside canning on a Camp Chef. It makes for a very convenient way to do canning. When you can, it puts off a lot of heat and it can heat your house up. But this thing works really great, except for when the wind's blowing because then it kind of, the wind blows on the pot and it kind of changes your temperature. So you have to um, watch it a lot. So this is the first canner that I ever got. And do you see how it rocks? It's not supposed to do that. This is the one that I just about blew up. I mean, it's, yeah, it still works. Do your research, read your book, so you do not have a rocking pot or self-injury, house injury, or whatever. There's little grooves in the side of your canner. Depending on what canner you get, your book will tell you where uh, your book will tell you what line to fill um, the watermark up to, what, li what line to fill the water up to. Mine, on both of mine, are the, is the very bottom line. I have never ever used any other line on this pot. Like, I don't know why these lines are on here. I have yet to use it and I've been canning for years. You have a little, th it's, it's this little thing, it sits on the bottom of your pot. It kind of keeps the jars off of the very bottom of the pot. And so this big pot, I probably only have yeah, a couple inches of water in the bottom. And then you just set your canner, and then you set your jars in the canner. A 
And so you just fit these in here. They're going to be snug. And if you're ever putting hot liquid, some recipes call to put um, hot liquid in your canning jar. When you're filling those up right before you put them in your um, canner, just give it another little twist because if you have a lot of jars that you're filling up, those can get loosened up on there just sitting there with the hot liquid. So double check that. With any pressure canner, has a little spout here. It's where your, where your knobs go at. Always look through it to make sure it's not clogged up because if it's clogged up, then the steam can't get out and you want these to steam for about 10 minutes before you start your timer. So you also have a seal in these. It comes out, you can wash it. Um, you wanna make sure the seal is fit in here really well. Um, these can get old after a while, they can dry rot. And if you don't have this seal in here and it does not make a good seal, then you're gonna constantly leak water out and your pressure's not gonna get to where it needs to be. So I'm looking here, I have a, there's a little mark on these lids that you line up with the handle to get this on. It's the only way to get it on. That's right, get it, give it a twist. Um, this is the newer canner here. It's the one that I have to watch the gauge on. I don't like it. So you just gotta turn the pot, get it however you want so you can see it the best. You don't put your knob on yet. That has to steam first. So give that a look. Just give your seal a quick inspection, make sure it's good, and then line your lids up. Alrighty, I need a lighter. All right, so that takes just a little while to get this water to start boiling in here, to start getting this to steam. Um, so with the newer canner, you just have your knob that goes on here. But with the older can canner, it has these little rings. And so this is, your, this is your pressure. And each recipe has a different pressure gauge. And so for the old one, you know, it's five, 10, and then 15. The newer one goes up to 20. If you're getting to 20, it's getting kind of into the caution zone. But depending on the altitude, is it altitude? Depending on the altitude where you live is what the canner recipes are made for. We're at 3,500 feet here. And so typically meat you can at 10 pounds of pressure for 90 minutes in these big jars. But so we are a little bit higher elevation. And I think the, the rule is a half a pound um, for every extra thousand feet. I don't have that option. So instead of 10 pounds, I just do 15 pounds. And, um, and then I just add a couple extra minutes. And so I will be doing this pot at 15 pounds of pressure for like 95 minutes. And then my newer one, the goal is to keep this at 12 pounds. Like I said, this one is really hard. So it's probably gonna stay around 15 12 to 15, and then I will do that one for 95 minutes as well. Okay, so I'm just gonna um, let these sit here and um, get heated up. Once they are right, the steam will start coming out of both of these little spouts here. You want this to steam for five to 10 minutes just to make sure that's flowing well. Once that happens, we'll put our knobs on here and you still do not start the timer until you get to pressure or to this starts jiggling. That's when you start your 95 minute um, timer. All right, so the old one, the one that works the best, has started um, steaming first. You can see the steam coming up here. It's been steaming for a few minutes, so it's good to go. Um, I'm gonna put the jiggler on here. There's another part to this, it's got water just kind of coming out now. You want this pressure gauge to pop up. So once you put this on there, this little gauge here, here it goes. Pops up and it's quiet. And then once this thing, it'll start rocking, then it will be ready. Um, you don't want this rocking too hard because that means there's, um, the pressure is getting too, uh, too built up in it. Uh, so you just want it rocking just a little bit. All right, so if you're just beginning canning, I highly recommend that you get um, a couple of books. I bought the Blue Book Guide to Preserving. I got this when I got my first um, canner. I've used it a lot. 
My favorite book is called the Farm Journal Freezing and Canning Cookbook. I found this at, um, I think I found this at the Goodwill. Some people are gonna say it's not the safe, it's outdated. This book was made in 1963. It was updated in 1973. And there's this big thing about, you know, oh, we've learned so much. You shouldn't go buy those recipes. They're not safe. I've been using this for years and I've never, ever had a problem with anything that I have canned by this book. And they actually might have updated this but since 1974. I don't know, but I love this book. I love the way it looks. I like the text in it. The pictures are super old. I love this book. So if you can find this book at a yard sale, Goodwill or anything like that, this would be the book that I recommend for anyone um, canning. So my philosophy with canning is newer is not always better. People have been canning for decades and it's all been fine. So why would it change from then to now? So I go buy my old book from 1963, my very favorite. Okay, so this is starting to rot just a little bit. And it is normal to see some, some steam coming out from around the thing. And so you kind of want it to keep at this pressure here, the steady rocking the whole time. When it gets building too much pressure up, it gets really loud. And so you can turn it down once it starts rocking to get it to the right temperature. You want to get the right temperature before you start your timer because when you first start messing with it, it's going to stop. And a lot of times when I have both of these going, it gets too hot. And so sometimes I'll have to pull this off halfway off the burner to keep the pressure, especially this one here, the new one that you got to watch by the gauge. I always have to pull it off because with both burners going, it gets way too hot. All right. So this one's steaming now. The little thing that's supposed to pop up here is bubbling. When I put, when I put this thing on it, the stopper that will, um, that will pop up in a minute. And that's when your pressure is really going to start rising in there. All right. So that's popped up. This one is ready for the timer. The wind is starting to blow here, of course, because I'm canning. And so that wind's going to cool the pot off. And so for the next 92 minutes, to be exact, 92 minutes, um, it's going to be constant turning this up and down to keep the temperature the right way. But that's too low, but it hasn't stopped rocking. So you can still keep the timer going. And so then you got to watch for your gauge here to get to 12 on this one before you can start your timer. All right, so both of these are up to temperature. I'm going to go set the timer and then from now until the timer goes off, it's just a constant monitoring to make sure both of these are at the correct temperature. One thing I do want to mention again, these lids lock for a reason. Do not try to open these lids while this is going because if you do, it's going to blow hot water and steam all over you and you're going to get burnt. Keep the lids locked. Don't mess with them until the end. All right, so these have cooked for the 95 minutes that they were supposed to and they've been sitting here um, cooling down for a little while. Before you open your lids, you need to make sure that there's no pressure in it. Things to look for is this is going to be popped that back down. It falls down when there's no pressure in it. And then when you take this off, there's no steam coming out of it. If it starts to have any kind of steam coming out, just continue to leave it and let it sit a little bit longer. So you can take this off and set it behind. Same thing for, for this one, the pressure gauge is down in the back. And then when I take this off, there's no steam or pressure in it. So pop these off. It's going to be a lot of steam come out when you open this. So you kind of want to do it quick and just kind of move your hands out of the way. There's one. There's a second one. Ouch. And the lids are very hot. One thing I forgot to mention that you need are these little tongs here. You can get them in the canning section. They're only a couple bucks. And so you're going to need that to get these hot jars out of the canner. I just use a towel and then just pick my jar up and put it on there and then transfer it to wherever you're going to sit it until it cools off. 
All right, so all these jars are out of the water now, and you can see that they're still boiling. Um, it's just the air coming to the to the surface. These will start popping relatively quickly once you take it out. There is one that's already popped here. Um, that popping sound is the jar sealing, so that's a good thing. It's not a bad thing. But these, um, I'll just let, leave these sitting here overnight, and then um, tomorrow then I'll put them in our pump house, which is where we keep all of our stored food. Another thing, if the jar is not completely full of liquid, it doesn't matter. It's fine as long as the jar is sealed. I mean, some of these are full of liquid and then others are just halfway down. Um, it doesn't matter. As long as the jar is sealed, it, it should be good. And you can tell when the jars are sealed because when you push on it, like this one is already, it's not popping down. But if I was to push on one of the other ones, you can hear it pop. But when you can't push on it, you can't hear the popping, then that one is sealed. You can see the dimple here where it's raised up just a little bit on these jars. That means these have not sealed. This one here, you can't see it. It's sucked in. That means that one is sealed. That one is sealed right there. There's no, there's no bump on it. But these here have still have to seal. So it is a lot of work, but it's well worth it. This give us um, part of 14 mils for the winter. Um, but we're really we're really thankful to have it and it's uh it's good on a cold night all right so i hope you enjoyed that tutorial on canning meat as you can see it is a lot of work but it's as far as work goes it is pretty easy use your canner get comfortable with it the more you do it the easier to get it gets all right so we're going to be doing more canning and preserving videos from our produce that's coming in from the garden and i am going to be hunting this fall so if you want to follow along on our adventures, hit that subscribe button and we'll see you next time. <laughs> You're laughing at me. <laughs>